Good day, Northgate. I'm here with my special guest, Joy Shockey. And we're gonna talk about Joshua this Sunday. Happy Sunday. So we're talking about Joshua and Jericho. What can you tell me about the story? The walls came down. Yeah. The walls came down. Did you learn that in Sunday school? She's not sure, but maybe somewhere along the line. But today's message is all about Joshua and Jericho and the walls coming down. But Lord, we pray that you bless your word today. God, just um, teach us through this story in our lives. Amen. So, how many days did they do this for? Seven. Seven days. And for the first six days, how much did they walk around the city of Jericho? I don't know. One time. And on the seventh day, how many times? Seven times. Seven times. And when they were finished, they had a big what? They blew their trumpet. They blew their trumpet. Excuse me. Yes, they blew their trumpets. And the walls came? Tumbling down. The walls came tumbling down. That's right. So we see the story in Joshua chapter 6. And I'm just going to read a little bit about that. It says, now Jericho was securely shut up. Because of the children of Israel, none went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Joshua into your hand, its king and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go around the city once. This you shall do six days, as me and Joy just mentioned. You shall march around the city with the seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark but the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times and the priest shall blow the trumpets it shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn and when you hear the sound of the trumpet that all the people shall shout with a great shout then the wall of the city will fall down flat and the people shall go up, every man straight before him. Then Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Ark of the Lord. Now, this is quite a strange plan in regards to defeating the enemy because there's no weapons, but rather just believing in what God has said. Would you have been scared doing that? Mm. Did it make any sense? No. No, it didn't make sense. But we want to trust God and do what he says. The whole story here is about faith and having battles. They're in the promised land and they're walking in the spirit, but we're going to have battles. Do you ever doubt what God says? Sometimes. Sometimes. I think we all doubt what God says, but we have to have faith and believe. And the idea of a trumpet is one that we see all over the Bible in proclaiming things, proclaiming victory, proclaiming praise, and proclaiming the need for help. Do you know anywhere in the Bible other than this story where you see a trumpet? Mm. Mm. What about you at home? Can you think of a time when there was a trumpet mentioned in the Bible? Mm. When Jesus comes back, he'll come with the sound of a trumpet. Yes, that's in Matthew 24, 1 Thessalonians 4. And in Revelation, there is the judgments, the trumpet judgments, actually. I don't know if you knew that, Joy. But they're all proclaiming judgment and victory when God comes back. Also, they used to have different festivals. One of those festivals was called the Festival of the Jubilee, or the Time of Jubilee. Do you know what that means? No. Do you know what that means at home? It was a celebration of 50 years, 7 times 7, uh, 49 plus 1, 50, where all the debts were canceled. Do you owe me any money? No. No, not right now, but maybe someday she will. But I would say, well, you don't owe me any money then. What would that 
Would that make you happy? Yeah. Yeah, make me very happy. Just imagine we own this house and all of a sudden after 50 years we don't have to pay anymore. But all the debts would be wiped out so they blew the shofar or the ram's horn to celebrate that they were free, that they had liberty. So in the New Testament we see the trumpets of God's return and they mean victory and God is going to judge and he's in control. And then also these festivals where we're celebrating these trumpet sounds or these praise of God because we are free. My trumpet's pretty loud, isn't it? Does it hurt your ears? Maybe just when I play, it hurts your ears. But it's very loud. And we think in this story, this shout was very loud too. And it was just, we are going to proclaim what God has done, his victory, his praise. And these people in warfare, and as Joy said, sometimes we don't believe, proclaimed that God was going to bring them victory, even when what they were doing made no sense. No swords, no ladders, no cannons, no guns, no horses. Just trumpets. You ever tried to fight someone with a trumpet? No. No, it doesn't work very well unless God tells you to do that. In verse 2, though, it's interesting that it said that God said to Joshua very clearly, I have given you Jericho. He had promised it. So they were declaring the victory to what God has said. Has God given you any promises in your life? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you know any promises from the Bible? Uh, uh... The promise that Abraham's descendants? Yeah, Abraham's descendants would be blessed. That was a promise to Abraham, but any promises for joy? Anywhere in the Bible, did God say anything to you that you can believe and proclaim? I don't know. Does God love you? Does he promise that? Yes, <laughs> he does promise that he loves me and joy and even you at home. He promises that in the midst of tribulation that he will be with us and that he is greater than the enemy, and even though we face many things, that he is with us. There's all sorts of promises, promises that he'll take care of our needs. You just name it, and we can claim them if the Bible says it, and proclaim them with a loud voice or with the trumpet sound if we're doing what God asks us to do. But the key is we have to have faith. What does it mean to have faith? Hmm. To believe. To believe. Not just a passing thought, but to believe. And when we put legs on our faith, it comes out of our mouth and we proclaim it. Just like when they were going around the city, they had to proclaim with their shout, their belief that God was going to conquer the enemy. And we have to do that in our lives. We have to speak what God has said, his promises, we have to verbalize them. Even when we come to know Jesus, you have to believe in your heart and... Um, have faith? Yes, but what do you do with your mouth? Proclaim. Proclaim, confess. Romans 10, 9 and 10, I believe in my heart, but I confess with my mouth. So my mouth is putting legs to what my heart believes. And that's what the Bible would say. And here... In the midst of their battle, they had to believe and proclaim with the shout and the blow of the trumpets, one long blast, and then God would work. Actually, in Hebrews chapter 11, which is the hall of faith, it says that their faith made the walls come down or fall down after they encircled the city. By the way, Jericho was probably about 10 acres. You know how big that is? Mm -hmm. Oh, you do, huh? Well, 8 to 10 acres, 10 acres is um, quite a distance to walk around. It would probably be walking every day at least 10 kilometers around. So it was a long time, and that last day would have been a lot of walking for them to do. Another thing if you caught in our little bit of story here is... The trumpets and the proclamation went before the ark, the presence of God. Sometimes 
we follow God's presence in what it asks us to do, but sometimes we proclaim what God has already said, and then we believe it. So praise the Lord for that. And as Joshua does this, there's a great victory for the people, and they defeat the enemy. And praise the Lord for that. In our lives, we face all kinds of tests, but we need to believe in faith and proclaim what God has said. Are there any things maybe in your life that you have to believe God for? Mm. Mm, hard question, right? What about your life at home? We want to ask you that as well. Is there anything that God has asked you to believe him for, to have faith for? Well, we want to encourage you today to proclaim it, to believe it. We don't want you to get weird. You know, I wrestled with this message all week. You know, there's the name it, claim it, and there's the weirdness of the, the faith movement that has faith in faith. But we don't want that abuse to take away from the truth of the principle that we do need to proclaim what God has promised in his word and what he's promised to us by his Holy Spirit. There's been many times in my life when I know God has shown me something that hasn't made sense and I had to believe it and I had to speak to myself and not listen to my own thoughts, my own humanness, my own doubt, but I had to proclaim truth to my mind. I can remember even moving here, which is probably when Joy wasn't even born, but my biggest step of faith in coming here, and there was many questions when we were here and many doubts, and the wall looked really big if I was going around it, but I had to believe, and God reminded me, speak what I have told you, believe what I have told you, walk into what I have told you, and then I will continually bring you into the promise that I have called you to. And in our story today, God had promised them the spirit-filled life and the enemy. By the way, Jesus, full of the spirit, Luke chapter 4, the dove, remember that? With like a dove at his baptism, kind of landing on his head, right? And it was as of the Holy Spirit. And God said, this is my beloved son. And the very next thing, the spirit sent him into the... Heaven? Not to heaven quite yet. The wilderness. You know what happened in the wilderness? He stayed there for 40 days. 40 days. And someone tempted him. Who was that? Satan. Satan. We all face those battles even when we're walking in the spirit-filled life. And it is easy to doubt then, but we need to trust in faith and proclaim to take down the walls around us. To know that God is with us, even if it doesn't make sense. There's a lot of the Bible, even a story like this, which would seem far-fetched. But God was asking them to trust, to proclaim, to walk in his way. So we wanted to encourage you today. And our story was about? Uh, Jericho. And Jericho. And the people had to? Blow their trumpets. They were proclaiming? God's promises right yeah. and we need to do that whether you're joy's age or my age we need to have faith and declare god's truth so let me pray and i'll let you go today thank you lord for this day thank you for your goodness help us to walk in what you have told us to do believing in what you have said proclaiming and claiming all that your promises give us Lord, may we not be afraid. We pray this in your precious name. Amen. So we'll see you later. Say goodbye, Joy. Bye. Bye-bye.